You are now listening to the Super Coach Experience. The Super Coach Experience. The Super Coach Experience. The Bound Gang. Hey Jake, did you captain Tom Trebojevic? Well, that's a shame you didn't captain him because me, Mikey. And welcome back to the Supercoach Experience podcast. What a way to start the episode. I am joined by a semi-full panel here, uh, joined by the coach of Trip Jacker Mafia, Mikey, in studio. How are you, Mikey? Yeah, what's up? It's good to be back. Had a week off last week. Uh, spewing. Work's been crazy. But yeah, good to be back. And it's been a while since I've been in the studio because I've just been recording at home. So yeah, big week. Uh, great week to be back. Lots to talk about in Supercoach. And yeah, keen to rip in. Definitely a lot to speak about, but the man of the hour has taken over me in the rankings. He's gone up to 103rd, 108th? 108th. 108th in the rankings. I've gone down to 279th. It is the coach of Vili Armies. How are you, Tim? Yeah, excellent, mate. Um, pretty happy with last week. Uh, very nervous about the week coming up um, and just wanted to give a little bit of a... Oh, oh, hail Tommy. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you caught it on that page, mate, and um, yeah... Yeah, it was, that was awesome. It, was, it went down exactly as we hoped it to be. Um, yeah, I thought he was breaking the record for sure. 190, uh, I think, he to was one. On 120 no- minutes, he had left to score. 20 minutes to go. And I was like, yes, he's going to smash it by 20. Yeah. Nah. He legit, he could have got 300. He could He could have done it. Yeah, I think, do you reckon he like put his foot off the brake a little bit and like, he was still trying, but just at the same time. Well, he's already chalked up the three for, um, <laughs> for um, the Daily M points. He thought, I might put a few No, he's got to try and ease his hammy. for next week. Yeah, that's it too, you know what I mean? Like, I've already blown people away. Like, we've, let's just chill out a little bit. Do you think yeah. there's let a... the Warriors come back a bit and um, let Tim tick all his multis by? <laughs> Do you think there's a certain as- aspect of him that thinks, fuck, I've been involved in absolutely everything here. Let me just sit back and let someone else have a go. No, nah, no, nah, not entirely. Tom's a legend. And, like, yeah, he, as though he's a legend, like, he's, he's a crazy player. He's a freak of a player. And, honestly, I know you always, you know, love – like love boy him all the time, but I, 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 I don't love him as much as you do. But I reckon he's a he's a great player, and honestly, if he stays fully fit, he's a better player than Tedesco. Big call. Sorry, you, you know Rooster fans that are going to get dirty by that, but if he can stay fit, you know he's he's incredible. Hundred percent agree, and because Teddy's done it for so long, is why he's touted as the best. Look at his team compared to the Roosters and the Melbourne yeah, side, like exactly. And look what Teddy's doing compared to Trebojevic. I know this is a very small sample size, and you know yeah, but, against. Penrith, he didn't produce this sort of a because they shut him down, and, and you're going to see occasions like that. So you're going to see now everyone tooting uh, Tommy, and a lot of people you see the captaincy increase, which you already have on the app, and um, it'll be interesting what you do. But um, yeah, there'll be games plans for him. It's like all these other players, like Tolls on a uh, rampage, and then last week you saw the Sharks really buckle down that edge. Uh, you know, teams do look at video footage, and they they are going to look at it. So I think, yeah, although a play can be amazing, you also got to kind of have a contingency plan and. You know, can they replicate it? And I don't think a lot of them can. I think a lot of this conversation will stem into our hot topics of the week. Um, but I guess we'll start off with how we went for the week. We'll start off with Timmy. We actually changed our captaincy in the Immortals Challenge from Jake to Timmy. What a masterstroke that was. Uh, 15, killed it, Savs. <laughs> Fifteen thirty-four or something. Yeah, mate, like our training, obviously, um, for years I'd been sort of showing leadership qualities. Um, <laughs> just the little things around the game, you know, just 
uh, at training, little extras and stuff like that. Obviously, I got the call up last week and um, yeah, really, really relished the opportunity um, and just tried to lead by the front, and which I did, which I'm really happy with. So, yeah, and, uh, full key, credit to the boys and all that. But no, moves, yeah, it was moves. mostly mostly a, a good captaincy effort, which uh, made sure you guys uh, came through and did your job as well. So, well, let's just hope it wasn't a one week play and it's a long term thing because we can't change the captaincy again. So hopefully you rank quite highly. We also um, um, come first last year, so we're backing up our title. But you know, I was up the top of the ranks nearly the the whole like of last year for everyone in that cup, and yep. yeah, that proved. And with me with the captaincy, that proved to be. Yep. What won it? So let's hope Timmy's up. Yeah, keep so it going. back on me for last week. Um, uh, I won't go too too into detail. I did uh, have the VC on uh, Cleary and stuck with Tommy, so that was a brave move. Um, I scored fifteen thirty eight. I um, played. I, I, one of my failures was uh, Remus Smith, and I didn't think he was going to score well. I said to you guys, I sort of didn't you, want to play. He actually did say it last week. He didn't feel good about Remus Smith, but the form he was in. It's really hard to deny, and, and yeah. the the strength the Rabbitohs were at, I, I don't blame you for playing him. So, yeah, he got the nod for um, the starting spot over Staines, but then prior to the game I had that little um, Staines flicker in my heart like I did the week before that yep. let me down, and um, this week it paid off. It just There was just more, um, more things that tick, tick more boxes for Staines this week. You know, I think yep. the main one was just the... The fact that he scored those points against that club before. Yep, yep, yep. So I thought maybe there was something there in that opponent, the Penrith match up and go, okay, we like going down this side against them, even though maybe the um, players might have been slightly different from last match. They weren't completely right. Uh, they weren't completely his side the whole game too. I was so shocked. But, um, yeah, it was and, and awesome. And Crichton actually um, gave some good draw and pass balls. Which oh, for once, hallelujah. Can he keep um, it up? He did hog one and go himself. He could have given, but... Um, yeah. yeah. It could have easily been four tries, but at the same time, hey, they, he scored a try. So good to on be me. fair, I think if you know you can score a try and you know and you can run over it, keeping the ball and doing that sometimes a safer option than passing. Passing it, where knock you, it on. Yeah, yeah, so people sort of bag me out for that. And, um, you know, it was a good try anyway. So yeah, um, oh, a couple of weaknesses in the side last week. You know, I had Barnett uh, let me down big time. Crichton let me down. Uh, Laurie let me down as well. So there was quite a few low scores there. I just sort of got lucky, I guess, in the fact that I had um, Heinz, Munster and uh, Stainsy sort of hit that sort of 100 mark for me, which sort of just bumped me a bit above the rest of the people that did Captain Turbo. You done? How'd you go, mate? <laughs> you done? No, let's go, let's go on to Mikey. We haven't heard from him in a while. Um, looks like he's on the bounce back. Yeah, so I uh, didn't get to speak last week, so I'll try, I'll try and be as quick as I can. But yeah, 13.59, like honestly, I'm just staying afloat. So I'm, I'm in the ocean, I'm, I'm in there swimming with everyone, all the leaders, are, I can see them up in the distance, but yeah, I'm, I'm floating. I'm getting a high enough score each week just to float. So back in the 10,000, I'm coming 9,000 for now. 13.59, Captain Turbo honestly saved my week. Uh, my trades last week is um, I got rid of Condon and James. I thought getting rid of both of them would really beef my team up and give myself some more playable options. So I went Clemmer. Main reason I went Clemmer is buy around coverage instead of Haas and the price I got getting for. It also meant with how Paulo's going, I didn't want to sell him just in case he played Origin. I thought it'd be a good – I've got now a third front rower. He went 77 last week, so it was a great hold. I did not play him. I played Clemmer, but – it enables me to not play Paulo each round when I think, like, this week. That Paramount bench, I don't like it. So I, I won't play him, but I still think I'm not, I've am not. i lost all this money. I want to hold on to him. Um, the second one, I got CHN as a bit of a pod. Only scored 43. Didn't really do much. He's playing the Bulldogs this week. So I still think that can work out. Old Low club on. too, so you might yeah. want to sort of be like, you know, prove that point. I always like yeah. old club matchup. Yeah, and I think especially the way he left him, I think he could do him dirty here. So, yeah, I've gone him. I was spewing. I was actually going to buy Liam Martin. Uh, didn't end up doing that um, because he was on the bench and then concussion happens and that would have been an excellent move. But, um, yeah, did pretty good. Um, I think the key thing here is I didn't play Staines, but I've got Staines, Subs and Simons and I held all three. They're going to start generating my, uh, money. I'm doing pretty good heading into the buyers. i got 13 at the moment and, um, yeah, I'm just I'm just waiting for that big week with 1500. But yeah, the my, the star of my team this week, other than Tommy, was David Nofaluma, who's worked out as a bit of a pod and finally right, finally yeah. paid uh, dividends with 113. I think with all the issues this week, he'll be forgotten about. I think you'll get him for under 20 percent owned by the buy round. 
Yeah, I, I really think David Nofluma is a good option this week, especially against the Knights who are struggling. Um, we picked him up a couple of weeks ago or, or even last week. Uh, good on you. I picked up Holmes and Best, so I really chose the wrong options this yeah, week. Yeah, he wasn't and, really the best, eh? Hey? And I only went down 29 spots to tw- uh, 279th. Uh, Still on the hunt, mate. I was on 800 or 900 before Tommy played, so... Really, he he absolutely saved my week, and this is why I love him because he just has them games where he gets bulk points, and isn't it the best feeling? After the first try, you know exactly what's going down. Yep. You're like, here we go. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was, I was doing it my missus captain him as well, and um, yeah, when she did that too, I was like, when he scored his first, I was like, watch this. <laughs> I was like, watch this, yeah, and you know, he sort of yeah, it was for, he clapped for the ball, he uh, like, give, 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 and he just after that first over. half, you're like, all right, here we go. He's going for the record. Yeah, yeah. He's going for the record. And ten percent, oh, eleven percent captains. That's a nice number compared to the twenty-five and Cleary. I was like, yep, he'll yeah. beat Cleary. Scored yeah. big move. Funny thing is, um, I was going to go back to this when you said you VC Cleary. I VC'd him as well, and I was Same. I was quite sure he was going to update to one forty, and I had my team Same. in place to loop. How crazy! And people did loop, which is crazy. Like. Didn't get two of those tries. His people thought he would. It went to Crichton. So yeah, you just assume because he's that guy that normally gets all those stats. He'll get him. But um, man, that was a big play not looping. I considered it too, but I was like, nah, Tommy's going big. He's going big. Yeah, my side was ready. Curran was in the starting side, so I could swap him and Ben Trebojevic out. Um, of course, never doubt Tommy. Never doubt Tommy at Lotto yeah, Land. Be like I you. think Lotto Land is a fortress again. Especially with Tommy in the side. While Tommy's there. While, only while Tommy's only there. Only while yeah. Tommy is there. Um, I, I guess they're playing at Suncorp this week. He doesn't average as much. It's Pot- meant to be a home game for them too. Yeah. So it is a real – I swear that happened to them last season. Yeah, no, I swear no, they it's did. It's happened to them every season against it's, the Broncos. They're getting stitched up. Yeah. Um, it always happens with the Warriors as well. They have a home game in New Zealand as well. Well, they haven't had any home games this year, but yeah, <laughs> technically. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually uh, – uh, this week, Tommy is an option. Uh, I'm just VCing him at the moment. Um, obviously, we get to that later, but um, I think a lot of people will be going the straight C on him. But um, following up from a massive score like that, it's always tough to captain twice in a row, in my opinion. I'm getting the vibe that more people are leaning towards Cleary than yeah. anyone else. It'll be, it'll be VC uh, Tommy and C Cleary with the most popular combo, especially with Penrith playing late in the yeah. round. You see more paper, uh, people take that safe option. With David Fafita out, you think there's lots of points. But yep. the way I see it too is there's a lot of points to share around. So yep. I feel like with Luai on the side, clearly getting to 150 plus doesn't happen as often. It's yep. more the 1 to 110. Yep. And as you said earlier in the season, you're looking for a captain of 150 plus these days. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess we'll follow that on to our trades for the week. Um, Mikey. Um, my trades of the week. So yeah, I was real. I haven't saved any trades. I know, I don't know how important saving trades are. I always still saves all the time, but I will save them. Don't you start with that tone because you're in the same boat as me. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, honestly, Cleary. Oh, Cleary. No, it's because I'm looking at Nathan Cleary's name. Yeah, no trades this week. I will look to save trades. Um, yeah, with all the drama, it was a massive TLT. So. The first thing I want to do is Schuster. Is uh, That's going to be one of the hot topics this year, so I understand. I'm selling him. The main reason is if he played the buy around 100% hold. But, yeah, I, uh, that 43, and there's going to be games where he punches that out. I want to take and grab a second gun 5-8. So my f- initial thoughts pre-TLT was um, Schuster to Dewey. Uh, I heard uh, – so Barnsey and um, Savs recovered him a lot, and I loved what they said about him. He went 140 last week, and in 5-8, kicking goals – he really stands out because he controls a lot of the attacking play and is outstanding. The risk with the Tigers is obviously this team, they're chopping and changing ground to find a winning formula. That is scary and dangerous, but I can't go past a guy with a minus 18 break even who has a Sentry nice... doesn't scare you, though? That's what I'm getting. That's pre-TLT. Yeah, so a okay. nice a nice scoring run and uh, we'll play the buy round. But then, obviously, TLT hits centre. I, I can't go there, but... I'm I'm actually I reckon I've got a small nigga that I reckon it's just a, a, a smoke screen. I reckon there's a chance he could actually start. I saw someone post something about Luke Brooks saying he's a bit like like faint hearted and he wouldn't be able to handle being dropped early in the week. He doesn't handle the media really well. Maybe last minute we see do we shift to five eight. If that happens, I'm pulling the trigger. I'll do that trade. 
if Tui starts. Even with the risk that he could get dropped there again, I'm hoping if he starts in 5'8", he plays. Maybe in defence because he's been leaking tries. I'll he tell goes you what I start. don't understand. Um, I, I've heard the same thing. I heard Jock Matten is due to debut at halfback. He's on the bench, yeah. Um, but... Oh yeah, well he's going to come into the starting side. I just I just don't get why Adam Dewey was um was mucked around here. Like why wasn't it just a straight swap from Brooks? Like it just it, doesn't make sense. Uh, the, you know the only sense that it they can want make. To, they want to um, instead of putting Dewey to the center creates more talk than Jock Madden on the bench. Right? Yeah, possibly. But at the same time, maybe one guy I heard was just saying like Luke Brooks isn't really good with the media and he's a bit like you know. He doesn't handle very well. He's, Hold you know. on. So you, someone's saying that they're, that the reason Madge would move Dewey to centre is because he's not good with the media? <laughs> no, 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 no. Luke, Luke Brooks. Brooks. Oh. Luke Brooks. Like the fact, you know, when he gets dropped and he takes it to heart, like and all just – these are all just rumours. But at the end of the day, I just can't see how you would possibly drop Dewey. He's got to I start at 5'8". I don't see it as being dropped. I, I see it as – Or drop um, him to centre, but – I think that it's a more of a it's, – it's Madge trying to – Prove his coaching credentials to something's not working, and I can fix a problem. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, yeah. not keep doing what I've always done. So I'm going to try something different. Yeah. So let's put Moses Embo, who's playing absolute crap. It doesn't into, make sense. I don't. Yeah, I don't He's, get it. But I think that's where it's coming from. It could, it could also be they're they're letting Moses Embo like they're sick of him. They're going to let him sink or swim, and obviously, I think he knows he's going to sink. So he's got ammo just to punt him straight away because yeah. he hasn't played bad enough to well, – I, I don't know, but I don't, I don't, if, if, if Dewey is named at 5'8", I, I, I still really like that option. I, oh, I did speak about him last week. His low score is tw- – tw- 20 was the outlier. His low score besides that was like 60. Yeah. So I, I really think he is a premium 5'8 option this year. Um, By round two, it's just – he is playing the game, so you get a look too. With, so. with their draw. That's perfect. With their draw. Yeah. Um, um, when the draw toughens up a bit, uh, um, I think. i sell him off. But, yep. Um, yeah, so at this stage, I've got in Luai. It gives me a Walker, Luai, Cleary, Walker as my full house. That's gun. Um, obviously, if I get Luai, I hold. But the thing with Luai is I knew that he wasn't making origin. I'm sweet with it. But I really, if I'm bringing him in, I really want buy coverage with the trade out of Schuster. I really, really, really want buy coverage. So that's why, um, yeah, I've got Luai in there. But at the same time, if Dewey doesn't go to 5 8, I get Luai. I'm happy with Luai. I'll keep him for the, uh, for the end. Uh, I love watching Luai and the amount of time I go to every Penrith game and going to Penrith games and seeing Luai go crazy and not owning him sucks. So I love that. In my second trade, I was always ready. When David Kumar went to the judiciary, I was like, all right, okay, have a plan. If he somehow miraculously gets off, I save that trade. If not, I sell him, and I've sold him. I think it's crazy. Like, can I see a world where you hold him? Who cl- did you say, Clemmer? Sorry, for feeder. Oh, okay. I meant to say for feeder. If I said Clemmer, I meant for feeder. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't see a world where you can hold him. Like, I understand maybe why people want to, but three out of the next four. If you can save trades and you save trades, you make that trade. I think the people who do want to hold him the most are people that have just recently picked him up in the last one or two weeks. They, they heard eight hundred and fifty thousand. It's 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 crazy. It's ludicrous. Like what I, what I'm going to do with it is I'm selling it to Ryan Madison. Yes, there was the option to go to Isaiah Papili. No, I want Ryan Madison because it gives me two hundred and eighty k. I'm going to save two hundred and fifty minimum aside, and I can use that money to get Pappenhausen or Fafita back because. With getting low, I've, I've used nearly all my bank and reserve, but I've strengthened my sights. Okay. But, yeah, that's that's what I want to do. So, really, I'm getting two big point scorers in this week. I know what Madison's like with the concussions, but if he doesn't get a concussion, he's a huge play for the Byron. Huge play. Slight chance of origin, but there is so many forwards to fit into these spots. Yeah. The live trade button has been used. Oh, my God. This guy, uh, of course, it's after I'm talking about my trades. So what are you doing, Sav? Oh, well, well, I'll go over my trades. Have you spoken about your trades yet? No, but I feel like after pressing that button, he's got to talk about oh, his yeah. trades. Yeah, I'm fair. I'm having mic issues, I think. It's sort of dropping in. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't sound like do you a problem, head, Do you want to head over to that one? It doesn't sound it, but it's not picking it up as easily. Jake always has problems with that one too, so... Um, we will just fix that up. But yeah, go on, Savs. Tell us, tell us about this first. Let's see what your trades were. So my trades were David Fafita to Isaiah Papalihi, 
and uh, it was actually Teague Wilton to Liam Martin. So Teague Wilton to Le- Liam Martin. I love that trade. You bank 5K. I know it's nothing, but you can do that trade to, to a player who's on the way up. So Teague Wilton, he's pretty much on the way down, whereas Martin is on the way up, plays round 13. Starting probably Cape, gets 80 minutes yeah, this week. Capewell is not in the side this week, um, so he'll play 80 minutes, and he's in a, a side where absolute – Complete attacking potential is available every point in the match. Um, so he's in my side this week. 72, we looked before. I think it was only one line break assist. And, and um, uh, five tackle bus, and he got like four offloads. So yeah. he, no no tries or nothing in there. It was, it was a completely workhorse, and it was only in 49 minutes. The week before, he got a try assist or something like that, and he got 70 as well. So don't forget uh, last year when he was starting 80 minutes, he ended up nearly at 500K. So yep. he's a massive player. I wanted him so bad last week and spewing that I got CHN, so I can't get him. A break even to minus eight, and the re- and he's playing in round 13, which is but, the big yeah, seller. Starting this uh, week. We'll play 80 minutes in round 18. So he he's in my side this week. He'll be playing. Um, and my second trade was David Fafita to Isaiah Papalihi. And can I guess? You've, you've gone, you've listened to me, and you've gone down to Madison. I've gone to Madison, yeah. <laughs> so, I knew I'd talk some sense into you. So looking at it, 210K difference, and really Isaiah Papalihi is on the end of an absolute crazy attacking streak. It's too much to spend on him. Like, yeah. It's, when you can buy someone from Madison who's at a 90K discount, it's absolutely huge. Like, I understand he comes at risk of concussions, but, like, can Isaiah keep this up? The week where he doesn't get 80 minutes or these attacking stats, like, I understand, like, he's an awesome option, but when you've got Madison sitting right there for that cheaper, and if you've sold for feeder and Puppenhausen, what's your plan to get him back? If you don't have any bank, you need to have some bank. You need a contingency plan, especially in Sav's point of view. He hasn't saved any trades either. So he's going to have to waste two trades to get those guys back or yep. get eaten up. So... You're going to have to have money or you're screwed. You need to have a backup plan. So, yeah, I've done that trade um, and I'm quite happy with it because I banked that 210000 And I, I can I don't have to aim for a cheapie over the next few weeks. I can just upgrade my mid-ranges to guns after I save and a couple of trades. Yes, that's so, the key so, word there. So next week, trades. next week, if I'm not saving two trades unless injury occurs to a key player, well, then – just, give, just give quickly, Sab. How, how many trades have you saved? <laughs> <laughs> Mike is taking over the buttons. Am I on the mic? He was meant to say zero. On? That had a delay before. So, yeah, how many trades have you saved? Is, it, is, it, is this mic turned on? <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, hold on. Can you turn me up in my ears? Oh, uh, uh, yep. Oh, it's Sorry. still very low, isn't it? I, I, yeah, yeah, I can. I missed the button down. there, but yeah, he hasn't yeah? saved. Is any. that better? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? There? Yeah, that's much better. Oh dear. Yeah, so, um, yeah, save so zero trades. Um, in the position I'm in... <laughs> oh, that feels good to use it on him. <laughs> so, zero trades. Um, the plan is next week to save two. Yep. Hopefully save one or two the week after because I feel like three or four is the magic number. Before that or going into that, yeah, 100%. Yep. I think three minimum. If you can do more than that, excellent. Um. Pod move could be Jason Tamalolo as well. Yeah, like it. Uh, and I guess that segues to Timmy. Timmy. Timmy's trades. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you about um, Liam Martin. Like, is he someone with – like, do you have a plan? Is he someone you're going to just hold on to and use as a backup later in the season? Or is he so, someone you're hoping to turn into a keeper or are you going to sell him later on for someone else? So someone like him turns straight into a Tohu Harris in round 14 or 15. Um I think the fact that he's on the way up, minus break even, it's the perfect time to jump on people like this because by the time they peak and you're ready to sell, um, they would have used their purpose anyway. I, I don't think I'll play him, say, next week when Cape Wall's back. But if Cape Wall kick out go down, he becomes an 80-minute starter. Yeah, that ex- changes things. Ex- exactly. So say Cape Wall gets injured in origin, well, I can hold on to Liam Martin as a pod for a bit longer. But um, I think at the price, he, he's definitely under – Valued for what he can produce. At is he that. like three? He's three ninety two. Three ninety two. He was at three forty five last week, and I yeah. was looking at him. Actually, it was less than that. It was like three yeah. thirty forty, and I was yeah. I was licking my lips, but but, but Capo was named to start, so, so um, the HIA you. really really helped him. But um, yeah, I, I suggest if you have Teague Wilton and you have no one to go to, Liam Munn is. I reckon he's more than a perfect option. I think he is the 110% option you have to go to. Oh, 
depending on your team, really. Yeah, I like that. 110% that you have to go to, <laughs> depending on, I'll just reject that. Okay, um, yeah, so with my trades this week, I'm really, really undecided, so I'm not going to commit to anything. Um, and yeah, I've got a couple of ideas. My, my issues are... Um, can, I, can I just uh, butt, butt in for a second? Go I ahead. was going Isaiah Papalihi because the attacking opportunity was so up there. I've just looked and Ryan Madison scored 85 last week. and Try assist. He was, yeah, he was involved in a bit, but the, the fact that he can produce exactly what Papa Lee he produces. 200. 200K less. cheaper. Uh, Madison, I think the only reason I'd be going Papa Lee here over him is I can shift him to the front row when... Yeah, and don't forget with that Brown uh, or whatever it is, like the minutes could have definitely been inflated to Papa Lee. This week will be interesting to see because the week before he only played 67 minutes where Madison on his first game back from concussion played 80. Yeah. So I assume still... Yeah, like Lane's on the bench this week. I reckon still Madison will play the eighty. Papa Lily won't. And do you want to spend that much money on a guy really, that's not going to play eighty minutes? Really, no. really good point. And I thank you so much for um, for pointing me in that direction. Well, it hasn't worked out yet, but yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's a smart move. So. I, I I feel better about it. I feel like I've got mm. I've got three hundred seventy four k in the bank right now. So did you even consider Madison? Like, or was it just no, straight tunnel vision? No, nah, he was he was straight in my side. So my initial trades was Takiyaho to Paulo. And then um, it was Teague Wilton to Ryan Madison. They, they were my trades this week, but the fact Takiyahu was named and Fafita's out, um, I've obviously had to go in different directions. Tim, let's move on to you. <laughs> I'm yeah, cool. sorry. So my main uh, issues, obviously, for my side is Munster and Fafita not being named, both playing uh, that origin, having about a two-week period out. So... They look like they've both got to go for me. I was trying to see if I could maybe hold one and was trying to sort of find an argument which one it would be. But uh, the more I look at it, they're both cells. But it's just really frustrating because, um, you know, I did have plans for this week. I, I would have liked to have moved Barnett on. I still feel like I maybe do um, just because he is going to lose cash. But then it's about how strong of a 17 he be able to field. But if I don't think Barnett's that strong of a player then why am I fielding him anyway? You know what I mean? But it's just because, I mean, he's had that one game at Locker. There's a little bit of fear that maybe uh, he gets a bit more game time. Maybe he gets a bit more, a higher scoring around the 65s where you're happy with him. He'll get the goal kicking back in 13, which I don't really want to hold on to someone too much just for a 13 factor. I'm sort of trying to play a bit more of a long, longer game as well. Um, I'm thinking actually a bit out the box and going um, – two players that aren't playing 13 this week, um, but those players will both play the next buy round. So I'm looking – the only way I can justify that to myself is the fact that both players that I'm selling are origin players. So um, it's kind of nice that I can move them on because it gives me a bit more space as well within my team and um, for the long haul and not having those sort of, uh, you know – having to back up and just all those clouds. So I think I'm targeting possibly Cody Nicaruma in 5-8. I, I like that. He's a super pod, man. And, um, and He's scoring like so well, isn't he? Yeah, well, I, I, I don't score. like it, man. It's just, the, I, it's just the next best option. I've loved having two gun 5-8s and I've had Little Eye um, and Munster for most of the year. I've only had Schuster there for that little bit. And as soon as I could get two guns I did it um, even though Schuster did quite well so I was sort of uh, regretted that uh, in the long run I guess but um, Cody Walker I'm kind of looking at a little bit as well but then there's the origin thing so he's sort of put me off that I feel like he may have selection I don't love him at five eight uh, fullback still but he'll One week to go. shift back yeah um, and because he hasn't really gone on that point it might be his turn now but does play Penrith next week yeah, so there's every every single little uh, option I've looked at my trade. I've fit, for every reason that's a good reason to do the option I'm looking at, I've found an equally uh, negative reason. So I'm still at the whiteboard sort of like trying to cross the T's, dot the I's, work out what's the best long-term pitcher. Um, the, my, my thinking about getting the 13 players, is, uh, the, not getting the round 13 players and getting them longer, is I think that they're going to do good over the long-term period and so averaging out will work for me. But I'm just really nervous about, you know, when it does come to round 13 and I look back to now and go, 
you know, three weeks ago, Tim, what were you doing? You could have got at least one player, one more player, and one more player might be 100 or 50 or 60 points, which might be massive for the rankings. So I'm st- I still don't know. Um, I'd like to be able to get CWTs into my team. If I could ignore, say, Munster and Barnett, uh, Munster and Fafita are playing, my target would be to improve my CWTs. I always say back to front. I'm, I'm dyslexic as hell, CTW. Um, but, yeah, look, the, the thing is, it's because um, Saab and Simonson have scored well now. You've got to hold them. Yeah, I've got to hold them and make the money from them. So I can't move them on. I, I can't really sell Staines. He's still making money. Um, Laurie plays round 13. I don't. I just can't really sell him. I, my, my sell was Remus Smith. Uh, my sell was Remus Smith, but yeah, I. So I, what's your I, second I, trade at this stage? I've got a. I, I'm, I'm thinking Torhu Harris. He's a bit overpriced. Um, you guys are maybe talking me a little, a little bit into um, Madison. Madison, but That's the problem is you to get extra number because if you're counting numbers and you're counting to oh, Luai, it's a good chance they get picked. Yeah, the thing is about Madison is I had him from the start and. Wanted to get rid of him from round two because I didn't like what it, I didn't like what I saw. He looks better now. Two. He looks better now. Yeah, I think. I'm yeah. a little bit worried about head knocks again. I think yeah. one more head knock. I is, agree. So I don't know, man. I'm really, 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 um, really unsure at this point. Yep. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think uh, the SE playbook. We're listening in the car here. Um, yeah. Covered a really good part on Tohu Harris. I think check that out. But um. Was yeah. it was it for him or against him? No, no, of? against him. Against so he scored him. a try and a try assist and only scored 105. So there's been a lot yeah. of attacking stats. His base is only around like you know up yeah. to 60. 50, so 60. So once they so dry off, if, and they, he plays, if they dry up and he has tougher opponents, he's only at a 60 point. And you're buying him for a way higher average than that. Yeah, I've never had him. He's always looked yeah. like that yeah. averaging. Yeah. Okay I think guy. he's a must for the next buy. But yeah, I just think when you can um, get a guy like Madison for this buy, yeah. you got to think I buys. Agree. Madison is the exact same as Tohu, but. Probably in a better side, so you'll score well more consistently. Cheaper. Um, so let's move on to the hot topics of the week. If you're ready to go, Tim. Yeah, man. All right. I'd like some pound cake. I'd like to. Oh, yeah. And we are on to the next hot topics of the week. Fullbacks is my first hot topic of the week. Tommy Turbo has gone 191. Uh, Tedesco has gone 54. Gutson, 47. Pappy is back this week. Not yet. Possibly. 107 to Ponga. What are our thought process on the fullbacks? I currently have Gutho and Turbo. Uh, Tommy Teddy. Tommy Teddy. I think Tom. Oh, who who are you? Who are I've you? got Tommy Teddy, but I think the best two to have is Tommy Pappy. I don't think that's the right answer. Yeah, I, I, I think it's got to be. With I, I think it's got to be based on maybe a five-game run, rolling run. So. It's, no, it's, it's, so. it's, it's a complete gamble. When you have a look at it, yeah, they might be the best two, but at the same time, are you going to get ahead with having you know like? It, it's going to fluctuate so much, and it, it also I think it depends on draw. And although they might be the best option, if you haven't held pups this week and you're spending all that money to upgrade it, then it might not be the best. option. I don't think it does depend on draw with Pappy. Um, oh, he, I think he's scoring big I, in every. No, game. I mean with all five players who has the best I, one. That I really actually think Pappy is the exception because I feel like he has not proven to us that he's going to score low against anyone. But yeah, I definitely think you get. Yeah, it's, it's, the thing is, if you said that and then I said no, nah, Ponga could be that. Honestly, I think it's a complete gamble and I think you could definitely get ahead if you had another two because if you have any other of the other ones, it's going to be a bit of a pod move. So what do you think a better strategy to attack this this year is? Are you better off sticking with the one person or the one or two people and getting all their 190, 150 scores or hoping you jump on someone when they get their 150 score then move on to someone else because – or at the risk of missing out on the last person's 150 score uh, – You'll, you'll lose hair and you'll lose sleep if you do that, Savs. But the main thing is that'd be too hard to do. It'd be too hard to keep up. You'd be spending way too many trades. Honestly, I think you've got to get the two that you believe to be the best and you ride them. If they're out for one to two week periods, then if you've saved enough trades, you could do a bit of a bunny hop. But I think at all times from here on, you want to have two of them. Obviously not in the buys, but it's tough. For me, the only thrill, I see myself like I've got... Uh, uh, Tommy Tedesco. I don't see myself selling Tommy at all. 
And the only other one I buy him is probably Paps. And I would consider Ponga, but you're going to need Papenhausen. It's, it's, it's so tough. It's very hard, but this is where you can be different. In my position, I'm like, all right, I'm going to antipod him and go him. Yeah. Because I'm already, you know, I've got to have one last stab at the, you know. It just depends at where you're in. In your case, like, it's 100% Tim. I think the best two for your case scenario would be, you know, that. But obviously with how Tedesco's going in his draw, you got to hope that he goes massive and then you can have an easier segue to him. But yeah. Yeah, it's a tough one because um, Teddy's obviously lost that cash and it's such a big jump to Pappy. It's and a huge jump. Teddy's, um, Teddy's, you know, he's, he's due. So he's like, due. I'm and not Sam Walker's to... out. My situation with the fullbacks is I'll go with, if I've got two healthy fullbacks that are gunned fullbacks or in that top five, I would just hold them. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, why I would you keep can. Them. If they're healthy, yeah. And then uh, it's a matter of circumstance. If you, like with Pappy, when he was going to be out for up to possibly two, which turned out to be three weeks, I think it was. All yeah, and the four if yeah. he misses this week. You had to do it, so you, you get rid of him then. You know what I mean? It's like with Luttrell. When he, if I had Luttrell, I would have kept Luttrell. He's but. another one too. He's another one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think it's just a matter of circumstances. You keep the two, there's always massive bigger problems. You know, I wouldn't be trying to chase the best two no. fullbacks until you get the opportunity, until the opportunity tells you it's now time to... Yeah, I think the biggest opportunity will be when you get to that next buy round and say, example, if any of those top six fullbacks we mentioned don't make origin, example, Gutho for the first buy and for the second buy, Latrell Mitchell, if he doesn't make the side. I'm not saying that I don't think they'll make it. There's just a lot of them, but one or two of them will miss out. Yeah. And if one or two of them miss out, if you have them for a buy round while other people don't, that's going to be huge because those guys can pump out like a 150 plus. So, yeah, it's 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 very interesting. Like it's honestly come up with your own strategy. The fullback position's never been like this, so I think it's it's going to be key to winning. We're I, getting some squeaks. Yeah. We're all looking what, at what each mic other. Like, is, it, is it me? Hello, testing. Yo. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I guess let's just keep going. Yeah. Uh, so are, are we done on the fullbacks? You reckon? Yeah. yeah it's, I it's feel like so it's a never it's a never accomplish. ending conversation, and it yeah. it's really. It, it changes week by week like, as well, though. You yeah, know what I mean? Now exactly. that Tommy's killing it, there was a lot of people that offered him that were like, you know, well, he got the hammies. Oh, I wasn't yeah. big on getting him in. Yeah. But um, got him in, took the risk, and now it's he's big my faith. Play. You know what I mean? Yeah. If he has a run of like the Roosters and Melbourne and Penrith, what, would you consider – oh, he's already played Penrith twice, so Melbourne, Roosters, uh, South Sydney. Would you consider nah. getting off him for, for maybe a pappy or something? No, I say no now, but it depends. If 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 say you got um, Teddy starts killing it and uh, he's nine hundred k and he's going to start dropping money, yeah, then I might go. Oh, okay, now I'm going to go Tommy to Pappy. That's the yep. best way. Like if I can, if um, if there's the right argument, yeah, you can't foresee everything. So yeah, coming up, it's a never ending story. I also yeah. think like Tommy, he scored 118, 118. 74 and 191. I guess what's he really sh- he's what are you worried about? Yeah, there's he no- hits 100 so consistently. Yeah, like honestly, and he has a high ceiling where he can eclipse like you know 170 plus like four times in season yep. if he's fit. Each of these fullbacks have their risks. Teddy's got his concussions, Turbo's got his hamstrings, his and hamstrings. then Puppenhausen's now had a little bit of these niggas. They all come with their risks, and they're all gonna play origin. But Trail might accidentally put his boot out. Yeah. <laughs> Not on the chin. Exactly. All right. The next hot topic, five eights. Um, Josh Schuster is a very popular one and Cameron Munster is also a very popular one. What is our strategy going forward? Are, are we planning on – so you're getting in the why? Um, or do we, yeah. So well, there's a gamble thing. I've been thinking about yeah, it. There's I don't, all, there's I don't know if I love it. I'm, I'm a bit like I – can, I can see a lot of uh, like a good arguments for it because, you know, he's been averaging about 57. Yep. Um, pretty much on base like he hasn't done anything creatively um great yet and maybe that's to come but i don't know there's just i just don't feel like i want to get too many cash i feel yeah. like i'm making money in a lot of other areas yeah. i'm thinking if i'm if i'm not going to play him i don't know why i want him and i yeah. think of uh, yeah i know i did, there's the ability to make that money but i just think two gun five eights it's almost that time of the year where two gun five eights is like something you want to run 
He's because five eight and half back, uh, five eight and um, uh, the uh, fullback position particularly are you know get very involved in those sort of running and yep. plays and the <laughs> and the linking sort of. I I agree with you with the um with the Tyson Gamble trade. I think it's not the time to go Tyson Gamble. There's Sean Bloor coming up. There's um there's oh, there's a lot of options coming up. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, like the Fee guy guy in the centre wing. Suwali. Suwali, possibly. Um, and we, we've just had um, another cheapy few weeks ago. forget who it was. Not but talking about Sini, are you? It probably was Sini. Sini um, stinked in a... Oh, okay, your second get Sini? Sini, yeah. Sini. Are, yeah. we, are we saying the same thing? Are <laughs> yeah. correcting each other? Yeah, um, so, no, so we've had them options in the couple of weeks. And also for Feeder being out is, is a good cash generator. I feel like getting in Tyson Gamble is kind of putting your team in a step backwards. Um, yeah. Uh, whereas I think now's the time to have two gun five eights. Um, at the moment, I've got Luai. Uh, Mike is getting in Luai with the combination of Walker. You've got Luai and Schuster. I've got Luai and Munster. Munster. So the thing so, is, I'm thinking about going to Cody Nicarima, but then then I'm thinking to myself, Cody's got 50s in him. Like you see a lot of yep. 50s and, and 40s and stuff, in, and I think there's a lot of 40s to come from him yep. quite possibly because with Chanel Harris-DeVita in the side as well, he's sort of, um, you know, t- he, you were quite good last week. Yep. I mean, it was only his first week back. They've got the be- um, the Welsh kid on the bench that's yep. sort of going to come on late and – do some attacking things as well and sort of steal some of those plays, I think, as well. Some and the fact you don't have Paps, maybe you actually, you know, you might need to hold one of the three. I think if I had, like, the three, like, I'd be holding one of them if I haven't held one yet. That's a, maybe a conversation Hold you which do. one? Sorry, hold one. So of w- one of those, you haven't held Puppenhausen, you haven't, you're going to sell for feeder and you're going to sell Munster. Maybe the move is if you don't believe any of the 5.8s are good, why not hold? Yeah. I agree. I just don't – I think that's too much money to leave there. And I just think that if – I know. But if you're 17 is. strong enough and your team's strong enough, you could. But, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I must – I've got – I can have a really strong 40s. 17, but so, my, I've got a lot of weakness. Like, I've got a lot of crud. You know what I mean? I've got a lot of crud on the sides. Yep. So. Still got bloody um, the gauze I've got the gauze. <laughs> I've got the gauze. So. Um, see, my thought uh, – also, Josh Schuster here, I, I think he's in the conversation of – being a nice little hold. A lot of people are selling him to, um, I guess, to strengthen up their sides with blue eyes and stuff, which is fair enough. But I feel like Schuster's still got a bit to give. Yeah, he had um, like one bad, like a roughish week. And then yeah. everyone else, like in our like in our messengers, our group messages, everyone's Schuster, Schuster, Schuster. Yeah. And I hate it because I don't have him. Yeah. And like when he's doing his 80s and his offloads and he's going, he looks good, man. Yeah. I'd be holding Like last sure two weeks now. they played Penrith um, and Tommy absolutely put on a clinic. I think this week against the Broncos, they're going to be eyeing off Tommy and isolating Tommy, which will give the space to Schuster. So I get I, what you're saying, but I'd take the money and run. That's 300K. Yeah, he does look good. But at the same time, if you can sell him to a guy playing round 13, why wouldn't you? Probably without that, 70, I'm not going to play 5'8". 70K to go Schuster to Dewey, so I, I don't hate that either. And 100K to go to, to Luai. And you've already made 300K with Schuster, and the fact is... If he's got a lot of these fordism and Tommy keeps stealing the show, then he's going to drop money fast. The he's going to be a buy player for the you know the next the buy next round. the next so one. I, I get what you're saying, I'll but like if there's a lot of forties in there and he drops 50, 60 k, it's time to jump off. Yeah. But I can see where we're holding. But yeah. even if yeah, I, I, so I'm not done. Is this the week to get rid of him, or is there a, you can wait one week? Well, maybe you can afford to wait one week and lose about thirty k potentially. Yep. And he could have a big round against the Broncos. He definitely could. That edge has shown it can be weak. I'm not sure who he's running at. I was thinking but about buying him at one stage before I looked at Cody Nicarima just because I thought he was the next best 5A option actually, for me because yeah. I'm just because i stuck yeah. with, you know, Google and Munster. I, I wouldn't go Munster. that way because he's so highly owned. Um, yeah, but wouldn't buy get everyone's going to sell um, him. So but maybe. he's running at TPJ. Yeah, th- that, that's exactly it too. That, that's massive. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm still on the sell bound wagon. <laughs> Okay, I like it. Um, next trending topic: saving trades. If we haven't <laughs> saved trades, this <laughs> yeah. if yeah, this if this is not a topic every week and you're not thinking about it, then you probably have have so a plan. Let's do a thing now. There's there's 15 rounds left. It's round 10 now. Where there's 25 rounds. So 15 divided by how many Two? trades you've so got left? Two. So so you're gonna have. You've got 21. No, no you've got with 19. 19. I've got 19. So with 20, is it 20? So no, 15. So what's, tw- hey, Siri, what's 25 divided by No, no, 19? no. So so this is round 10. 
We have 16 rounds to go. So 15, six, there's only 25 rounds. So 16 divided by 19. Is so there's only 15 rounds. 15. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 15. No, but this week is round 10, so that's counted as one. Oh, yeah, but then there's a... But you've yeah. used those two But trades. there's 25 rounds. Yeah, but you've already used those trades. So you'd go from... You'd go right. 14 yeah. more. Four, two, Not very good so, no, so 19 divided by 15. Yep. No, f- yeah. Yep. 19 yep. divided by 15. We have 1.2 trades each round from here on out. Um, say, say you save four trades over the next two weeks. So we'll do 19 divided by 13. That gives you with 1.5 trades a week from here on out. And the back end of the season, it's okay to be a bit leaner on trades as long as you got like maybe a four, lot of coverage. Four trades for the last. You, you, yeah. you've as, got to have you've got to have all the important positions backed up too. You've got to have yeah. fullbacks. You've got to have hookers. As gotta, long as the trades you're using are going to benefit your side and strengthen your side in other positions, and it's fine. Like I understand I burn all my trades, but I've had to resurrect my team. It depends on what position you're in. But now that you're starting to resurrect your side, which I believe I have, I can now start banking these trades. And the more you save, the better, because in the end of the year you can make a late play, especially if you're in a lot of cash comps. There's a lot of things you can do with the trades, but I think when the options are there and there's been so many good cheap beers. There's so many more to come. You can't miss out on some of them. You might have these plans to save them, but if you haven't saved them by now, like sometimes you can't help it. But, you know, there will be times to save. And 100% have a plan. As I said, my plan, minimum of three in the next six week, uh, three weeks. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save some for sure. I think a lot of people just like to make trades to make trades. Like, oh, well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, luckily I you don't trade. I week. love making trades. How trades. good is making a trade? Trades, yeah, we know how much. I don't how many like, times has it helped you? It. <laughs> because the thing about me making trades, it's not so much about who the person I'm getting in. It's like I have a lot of, um, you know, fear about the person I'm about to let go who's going to do something. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm an- analysing the hell out of the people that I'm keeping because yep. I don't want to – because selling someone that's going to then do okay yep. is such a big thing. I feel like I've been really confident with the people I've been selling lately. Like uh, I feel like the only they person – sense. The only person who has done better since I sold them is Christian Walsh and he was probably – he was probably someone who was looking like he was going to be a trade anyway, and I traded into a round thirteen player, so I'm not not too disheartened by that. But um, yeah, I, re- I really think it's team specific, and uh, you've got to save trades in the next couple of weeks if you if you haven't saved any already, because I feel like leading into that round thirteen, that round before, and even the the week before that. You're going to need to be making trades to strengthen up your side. There might be injuries to round 13 players that you've held on for a long time. Like Otsu Kamano and Spencer Linu have been – people have been holding them for round 13 and who knows if they're going to get a spot in round 13. Spencer Linu, I'm for not – For me, wh- I'm not round holding them any, necessarily for 13. They're just sitting there doing their thing. You know what yep. I mean? They're just, they can just sit there. They can go up a little bit, go down a little bit. I don't really – you know what I mean? I don't yep. need to waste those <coughs> trades. Yep. I don't want to use them. Um, and if, you know, a, a bad thing happens in the next couple of weeks to one of my props or something, then I'll replace them. But, but later in the year, I'd need, you know, would probably look to have a, at least one back backup prop and one yeah. backup, you know. I guess we haven't, uh, we haven't talked about it, but how good Magic Round is this weekend? Yeah, I, I like it and I don't like it. I mean, I'd, I'd like it more if it was in Sydney, just so I could go to them all. But I, I kind of don't like how there's no Thursday game. I'm quite like disappointed that. with that. I, I need an extra day to think this stuff out. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you get so used to it, but at the same time, yeah, 100%. I like that there's a magic round because, yeah. you know, there'll be one year where I'll go to Suncorp and I'll go and watch a Super Saturday and it'll be awesome, 100%. And I think it's good for the game and, Which you know, Brisbane bringing in the biggest stadium. Yeah? I, I'm pretty sure um, Bank West is planning on maybe holding the next one. Oh, I'm oh, not wow. sure if, that, if that's... That'd just, be huge, which um, I'd uh, buy tickets to every game. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it would be great. How, how how crazy would the sheds be just with all the NRL players there? Yeah. Um, so our next topic, um, don't know if we want to touch on this too much because we've already spoken about it. For Fida Munster Grant, um, injuries, holding. If you've got all three, are you selling two or well, you, you're you've forced three, to hold one if you've got all three you've got to sell two at least you okay. can, i don't think you could keep two okay. on the pine let's just assume most people don't have grant because a lot of people kind of jumped early on grant last week yeah um if you got for feeder and monster are you hot is there any there's not much merit like, to no. hold no i don't think so if you're gonna sell one then you should sell the other but at the same time if your position if your team's in a good position maybe you can afford to hold one if you think it's in a strong position because 
as I said, if you don't have Papenhuyzen, you sell them both for them too. You're going to want two of them back. I don't think. I don't think you can. I don't think anyone's in a position where they can hold them. If they think they're think there strong enough, I think they need to rethink it. I don't yep. think you can hold them. I agree. Um, and okay. last point is the the cheapies are finally producing. So if you held the Stains, the Simonsons, and the Sabs, that you, you're reaping the rewards at the moment. It's they, always the case. You just got to be patient with some of them. You just got to pick the players. You got to be patient. They're on. always going to score tries, and it's going to come round one. It creates or a headache though, right? Because now you start to wonder, can I play them? You, <laughs> no, you can't. I don't know, but I'm, I looking, won't at match play up, them I'm looking at matchups now, and I'm going. Right, he's sub good for 60 against the Broncos with Tommy feeding him a couple of tries. Maybe he is. And then I'm going, is he on Oates, uh, Coates side or Oates side? And I'm like, he's on Oates. He's on the he's on coat side. Ooh, coats. Maybe him going at coats might be all right. Yeah, it's 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 a real headache. Um, I don't think I want to play Saab or Simonson. I think Staines is the constant headache for me because just because of the side he's in. I guess you could argue man Saab outside Manly, but yeah. It's tough. I don't, tough. Know. I don't, I don't know. You don't want it. It doesn't feel good. It, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. But I guess um, Saab scored a triple on the weekend and so did Stain. So they're producing the same kind of base and the same kind of attacking stats. I don't know. I guess it depends on matchup. You I pl- think you could almost create a f- an argument for Simerson too because they're playing the dogs, man. And like, True. <laughs> you know, and, and I just think that Ricky's like, they've had a tough week and like, how good would it feel just to go out and smash a shit team? So but if you have a strong centre wing and you're the only person you can leave out is Laurie, I just wouldn't do it I, I, my, I like the Tigers matchup. The reason I reckon I've been going pretty good is because my centre, my CTW ain't, ain't that strong. I've been trying to focus on all these other positions and I think that's where I've done all right. So... I'm now in a position where they're kind of weak. I've got like players like Remus Smith, who people, it's, you know, we were talking about buying and stuff last week. I don't think he's that great unless he's going to be on the wing. Mm. He, I know he scored uh, three tries two weeks ago in, in centres, but um, I think that was just a, a, it's, it's the circumstance of the way the game was yeah. going, where the ball was going and just, yeah, whatever. So I don't think that's something he's going to repeat one one more time in the next month. I don't think he's going to score another 100 in the next month. Okay, sweet. Let's move on to a quick little Turbo Hammy Cup up. So Turbo Hammy Cup, we're all doing pretty well. We're both with it, all within the top eight, are we? I think I'm ninth, but no, I'm we're all in the top point. eight. I had a look. The three of us, ah, are, they're on. Are in I the beat top Connor eight. from 360 by one point. <laughs> I couldn't that believe was very it. Good. Man. I, got, I got towed up by the Wuhan bat eaters in Matty Perso. Uh, he scored fifteen fifty or something. Uh, he, he's going. He's right down the bottom too. He was he, one of my. I yeah. thought he was one of the better looking teams at the start. Nah, of the he, was, he, started he was. He fire. started on fire, but he's really fallen off, and he had a really good week this week. Um, Ramian Noodles plays the Vili Army this week. Um, I'm really nervous. Oh, hey. wow. It sucks playing the like. It's like you know those games when you've got a tough matchup. I'm really worried that my boys are just going to sort of be complacent. I've had a chat to them this week. You know, like oh, we're coming up the Ramian Noodles. Don't take him. Uh, you know, don't underestimate them. They're a good side. You know, yeah, watch him get the captain right this. There's week. a good culture and everything there. Um, um, well, I don't even know who I'm playing this week. You're playing Costa. Brooks was oh, here. Oh, that's so, right. I am so playing Costa. He, he, has, he has one win from six matchups, so you you probably got it in the back. No, but he's he's at, I've been looking at his scores and he's been beating me most weeks. So it, that's a big matchup because although that he yeah he's been losing all these games, he is in top spots. And maybe that means I'm due for a monster of a score because to beat Costa, you have to have a monster score. So <laughs> yeah. here we go, 1,600. Pretty much. <laughs> um, and he's he's still top. He's gone into the top 100, 83rd. So he's having a kill over season. I'm really hoping you can knock him off because that means I'm a chance of taking over him. So l- let's see how he goes this week. Um, I am playing Berg Nation. Uh, good old Berg. Berg. So, you know... It, taken it, down Bergs already. It, it might seem like a, a nice little matchup, but he ha- his team has the potential to go large. Yeah, I, th- I think all the guys in there know what they're doing. We're all in there because I know what we're doing. What are we? Are we third now? We're third. We're third. We're a, go- we're a bunch of guys that all know what the hell we're doing. And the thing is, you can't sleep in any of It doesn't matter if it's the last or bottom. They all know what they're doing. And on their day, they can have a massive score. It's, 
It's an awesome cup, and I'm sure we'll keep doing this thing every year. It's it's great, and it's good to see the Facebook page starting to get some attention. So go ahead and like that page. Um, Ken Anderson's been doing a lot of work in there, so shout out to him. I did ask the Super Coach um, 360 boys about when we're going to have that Oz Tag game. Yeah, and, I saw um, that. And um, they gave us a bit of a hard time. I don't, did one of you guys forfeit or something last time? So I, we pulled out. I, did, I we, had no intention of pulling we out. We pulled out, but I wasn't able to make it because I had a, I was working a station that weekend, and I really wanted to play it. So I, I reckon we get it going again. But, yeah, unfortunately, uh, work's so guess, on a yeah. little bit of a like, oh, I think they'll forfeit again and that sort of stuff. So we'll, I think we'll have to get – the thing is, though, they've um, mistaken me for Tim Williams, which is a bit funny for two very, very different people. They've um, – that was sort of talking about um, – because I asked the question and then they said it was quite funny because he goes, oh, check this out. He's got pretty good hands. I think uh-huh. he's the number seven. And I'm thinking, what are they talking about? And then I put it together. I'm thinking, well, Tim yeah, brother Tim plays seven, maybe. Yeah. Tim plays seven, yeah. So well, yeah, Sads and I are both. Pro. We've all played Oz Tag together in the past and killed it, and I and still I'm currently play. Mate, so don't. So my hands, my hands ain't good, mate. Not a runner. I'm a good defender, but <laughs> I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. Maybe, maybe we just, just like spontaneously organise it or something like. Yeah. We'll just turn up to their house one day and <laughs> do with it with a football. And no, we'll go hand. over live on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> be like, hey, come to the park, hey. Yeah, that'd be that'd be mad. We should just go knocking on the door during the podcast. I know where they live. I'd be down for the game. I think they'd be down for the game. Yeah, all right. I, I reckon Supercoach 360 lads, if you if you're listening, I, I think, know Bergs will be listening. I think Bergs listen sometimes. Shout out to Bergs. I, I don't. Con listens too sometimes because remember you bagged him out one time and said he doesn't know much about Supercoach. I didn't. No, I didn't mean no, it I'm like that. No, I'm, I'm uh, exaggerating he, he, it now. He, he took, <laughs> He's he, trying to no, start he, drama. He, no, he took he took it wrong. I felt bad because he was like. Savs can eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> uh, he's, no, they're all no, good. They're all good say, super no, the best place, thing man. was is he didn't say Savs can eat a bag of dicks. He oh, said yeah. Sal. He's calling you <laughs> Sal like yeah, a name was Salvador uh, or Sal, Sally. Sal from the Mike and Sal show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we actually got a... Which is the biggest insult, not even... You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, that's the biggest yeah, it, was, it was good. <laughs> we, we got a shout out on the SA Playbook last week, but... Because he was talking about Tommy Trebovich, he was like, oh yeah, Savs from the Mike and Sal show. We're not the Mike and Sav show anymore. That's because so many people got used to it. Like, how many times have I called us the Mike and Savs this yeah. year? Like, it, it doesn't just adapt so quick, but I... It, it's getting there. Is that kind of like when you go to school and you call your, um, like, your, your teacher mum or something? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> kind of. Anyway, um, let's move on to some Facebook questions and then we'll wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> so what order are you going in this week, uh, um, I'm, go- I'm going all comments, and the first one that is up is Chris Moody. Why is Brandon riding Bradman best stick so hard, Tim Moody? <laughs> because so, he's the best. So there's a story behind this. Um, I, I think he was... I was driving or something, and Tim was asking me. Uh, th- his brother was asking Thinking for about bo- Dewey. Wanted to get Dewey last week. Dewey or Best, and he was asking who, who he needs to sell. So Schuster, uh, Lomax, blah blah blah. I said sell Lomax, right? Initially, I said get Dewey, but then after that, I went back and said sell Lomax. So he got him Bradman Best instead of Dewey, and it ruined his weekend because Best pumped out a 30 while Dewey pumped out a 140. So And he's blaming you more than me, and I yeah. was right <laughs> off Dewey. You were on Dewey for a little bit, and he just got it in for you. Yeah. Now. I think it's because he was... Um, cause I said get Dewey, and you're like, are you, are you sure, man? <laughs> it's because you, su- you support him. He's like, yeah, yeah, well, if he agrees, and that's, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then yeah. when you change mind, it was kind yeah. of like, oh, yeah. yeah. All right, well, I'm sorry, Chris. Um... Please don't hurt me. Uh, Jackson Maisland, Tohu or Maddo for Fafita? We'll probably get the other one the next week. Well, you guys have just said that you should go on Maddo and talk me out. Of trying well, to talk well me he's tohu, getting right? the, the other one the next week. So uh, Maddo with a break even of 64. Well, That's about his average. So it depends. Like, then you'd maybe look at matchup as well. Yeah. Well, they're playing each other. Are they playing each other? Yeah. Are they playing each other? Yeah, they are. Hundred percent, they are. It's magic round. Yeah. I, it's I would go Matto. I would go Matto because I feel like Parramatta solid side probably won't let in. Yeah, it much could be the way you go sixty. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Uh, Jared Watson, Munster to Luai and Schuster to Gamble, Munster to what the fuck, mate? Munster to Luai and Schuster to get. Mate, if you can't string a sentence together, don't fucking ask the question. <laughs> now, um, like, Savs gets pretty aggressive sometimes, but, um, yeah, the, I, like yeah let, the f- I like the first idea. Yeah, let's try and dissect this because so, I want to answer the question for you, mate. 
Munster to the wife and Schuster. I like to gamble that. and Schuster to gamble. Okay, okay. This is me reading it. This isn't your fault, Jared. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Munster to Luai and Schuster to gamble, or Munster to gamble and Ryan James to Maddo. He just cool. needed a couple of like brackets or combos pref- that yeah, made it yeah, easier yeah. for you. Poor I'm, guy, yeah. just <laughs> smashing, just <laughs> asking a little question. I prefer I, the second one. I'm not a massive fan of gamble, and I understand the cash grab, but we already touched on this before. I don't think it's a yeah. I, if you're I'm desperate, not, I'm you're not, desperate. I'm not off it just because he plays the 13 and. Like, uh, he, he's going to make money. He's got a pretty low B. Like, it's I guess very his job security is pretty decent with how much yeah, better they've been playing with that combo. But yeah. there's there's Ooh. reasons to do it. There's there's definitely it is a gamble, which everyone's been pinning all week. <laughs> oh, I hate that pun. It's so bad. And you love puns. Oh, I love puns. Oh, oh, can I just um? I'm a bit of a bit poetic sometimes. Someone sort of said on one of the pages, "Oh, should I take the gamble and gamble?" And I thought it'd be nice to correct him on more poetic language and said. The more poetic language here would have been, uh, should I take the punt on Gamble thinking about doing the runner on Walker? Because he was thinking about selling Walker. Oh, okay. <laughs> so oh, just, I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah it sounds, that sounds nice. I, I, need you to, um, I need you to read out a passage from the shady SC Lurker later in the show sure. um, for this week. So an upcoming passage. Oh, you want me to make a prayer? Yes. Oh, I make my prayers at like 3 a.m. <laughs> okay. And I, I know pray for a couple <laughs> okay. hours. Okay. So. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I like um, I, I like the first trade because I feel like you can't go with without a gun 5.8. You yep. reckon? Yep. You can't go with that. Uh, so thing. unless your other 5.8 is gun, which it doesn't look like, it looks like he's got Munster and Schuster, you need to get in at least one more gun 5.8. So um, Maddo, Maddo versus Papalihi, um, we've both gone Maddo. I feel like you, you, you're paying for the same output, really, right? Disagree. No? No, disagree. Papali is um, more reliable, I reckon. He's been doing it all year. He's, he's killing it, bro. Madison's been doing it for three price years, Price-wise, if they were the same price, which one would you want? And I know that's not a thing. Oh, I'd want Papalihi, yeah. but... But that's th- what changes me because of what their prices are. For 210k difference, you, w- the split is probably 10 to 20 points. I bought him over. I bought him at 620, which I still thought was overs at that time, and I thought that was his value, and yeah. I was happy to pay yeah. value. I, you know, I you're agree. Paying overs, but if you want to, you'll get what you pay for, though. He's not going to let you downhill. It's overs, though. But I you'll get what you overs. pay. For, you'll get you'll, you'll But get the minutes last week, you don't like entirely each week. There's been a reason why he's got 80. Like I uh, understand. Saying, like, and I he also got a bogus try. Since. Yeah, like I can't, I can't go against anyone wanting to get him. But if I'm going to pick two, I'm going to take a guy where I can bank aside. If you haven't, you're going to lose for feeder. If you're going to need to get back proper, and hasn't, I've said it time and time again, you're going to need a money reserve. Although, yeah, like it's just a toss of the coin because both decisions come with a risk. But I'm going Madison for all the reasons I previously yep. mentioned. The reason and I can yeah. argue it is a straight swap for for feeder to pop up to make seven price is because. I think he's more of a 70 player. I think he's higher than a 70 player. I think he's yeah. more of an 85 player each week. Um, even come, yeah, come off the cement, he will he's make absolutely he, great. He finds the time. He, he gets the ball. He makes it. T- he's just a, okay, he's I'm, a, he's I'm, an animal. I'm, I'm going to put this into my bold predictions later today, but it's going to be Madison Tout score properly here. That, that's going to be on one of the legs. Uh, also, yeah. without I don't, Bob, I don't think it'll happen this round, yeah. but um, I don't think it's going to happen. But the thing I is, think it's right, a better purchase for price. Oh, actually, he's playing his old club too. <laughs> he'll have he's, a big he's, uh, he's not an origin player, right? So he's going to be there, except for that one week he's got a buy, like at yeah. in, uh, later in the year. He's, he's, he's there every week. So uh, for, I like him. Uh, he's starting to <laughs> toss back. I've, toss got back. Him. I've got him, Sam. I'm so happy about it. Oh, I need my mate. Paper, bro. Toss you know? back if you need Sam. I'm sticking with my gun. I trust what I decide. I'm sticking with the two, I feel better about it. Adam Sargent. So with Fafita out, I was thinking of going to either Liam Martin or Flegler as a buy mm. coverage and cash making. Good idea to follow the pack and pick up Papali. So Flegler, we haven't spoken about. Named at lock. I really like him as an option at 280k. But 54 I'm, I'm, last week, but one more I'm, week would be nice. I'm waiting this week. Um, I, <laughs> I was going to save flag. trades next week, but um, hopefully he's someone I can wait a couple of weeks. I like of him Martin. Big time. I like him over Martin big time. I think he's just um, – he's pretty creative and stuff as well. Like for a – Yeah. You know but what if, I mean? if it's, it's going to be a short-term buy, I prefer Martin because Martin has such more of a higher ceiling. Upside, yeah. And he could be a very crucial player in that round 13 buy against the Tigers. 80 minutes this week. Like, he's proven both these 70s have come in 50, uh, 50 minutes and 59 minutes of time. I like it better. But Flegler, yep, could make a bit more cash for buck. There's injuries there. 
they, they, they both got compelling cases. I guess a Flegler is 280k, but pre event at 18 this week, I really do like him as an option. But personally, you know, I might wait a week and I don't mind to lean into him, strengthen up one by player to another better one. Yep. So next question, um, Dan Morgan, if you had to keep one out of Fafita or Munster, who would it be? I've already thought about this one. And I think Fafita because it's in a position where you can hold more depth. It, pick, what are your thoughts? Pick to sell or pick to hold? Is that what hold. You've got to hold one of them. It's tough because Fafita's more money. So if you can do more with the money or save more, then I'd probably hold Munster because Munster's only oh, – they're going to miss the exact same amount of time. So if you're playing Schuster every week, right? Then that's different. Yeah. But if you but have if Luai if you've and got two Luai gun five eight backup, I think that's perfect. Yeah, but that's I understand it. what you're saying. Like if Luai goes down injured, you then have to have sell monster anyway. So yep. it just depends. Like you're gonna sell him next week anyways, and maybe just hold. Doesn't matter who. You yeah, are. I'd say I'd say monster too. I'm sitting here because I'm in the same spot. I've got both of them. I'm sitting here thinking I ca- I, I can see myself possibly holding monster. Could yep. might flick, but for feeder, no, I can't. Even yep. though he's got. The, He's a, he's, he's a gun and everything, but I just think that with everyone else getting off, it's a good time to do it too. Okay, talking about getting off, um, I just yeah. had a wank. <laughs> um, <laughs> What's this segue? <laughs> no, no, Michael Carver is Lolo back. So 71 minutes on the weekend, scored 101, inflated by a try and a line break, um, 20 hit-ups. So just to go the other guy that commented on there, um, he meant... Yeah, he's, he's back as a super coach yep. option, not back, yep. obviously. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, is he? He could be. I wouldn't be jumping into buy, but he's going to be very well, – he'll be one what, of the most traded in guys at round 14. Was he ever off, really? Like, he only played one week at it was, 35. It was round one. Like, it's just about whether minutes, he's relevant or not. A lot of people didn't buy him because of that thing that Todd Payton said. Now he's come out and he played these minutes. If he plays these minutes, then 100% he's almost a must. But – it's going to be hard to bring him in before the buy round with all these other great second row options. I think Harris and Lolo will be two massive targets you're going to need for that next So 25 in tackles, 12 in tackle busts, four in offloads. So Offload and tackle busts have always been the juiciest thing about it. So 37, 41, and then 39 in hit-ups. So he scored 80 points. So that's nah, that's wrong. That's wrong. Who's going to be 60 old guessing? 39, 41. That's why right. I think he scored at the end of the game was a bit of a statement. Like it was a bit like. So 70 in base, he scored, or he's base. I think he is. I think he, like the guy, like, is he back or he is back if he's making a start? I think he is back. If he keeps those minutes up, he's back. But at the same time, would you be buying this week? It could be a big problem. No, he, he played the buy around, you're buying. Bre- yeah. Oh, are they not playing round 13? No, no. Mm. That's why I said yeah, he's going to be yeah, one of the yeah. most traded in for round 14. See, I was nearly consi- – I, I thought Cowboys were playing round 13. I was nearly considering swapping Madison for Taumalolo because that is the pod move. Um, but, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd be doing yeah. the same thing, but so would so many others if yeah, you played the first one. I agree. Um, so next one, I've lost where I'm at, so I'm just going to get it up again. Um Wow, 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 wow. Is it worth selling for Fafita for the time being? Uh, we've gone through that. Yep. Uh, Chris Moody has... Your second question, that's my brother. You asked it first time. Yeah, I know. This has messed up the order. Um, let me see if I Is Turbo a must-have Luke Ray? We uh, really cover the full-back option. Yep. But yeah, um, yeah, I think you need him. I think with the draw over the next couple of weeks, yeah. It's kind of a, like if if depends if you're you selling didn't get for him it. at five hundred, like when he was like I, was like, I hate paying over. Yeah. Like, I know I said no, I'd do it for no, probably, it's, but it's not overs for him though because he can produce it. Like and he could he, easily cost nine hundred. You're paying unders getting him at five ninety. So yeah, um, I think it just depends who you've got. I think if you can, I don't know. I just think if you if he didn't have Teddy, maybe he could get Teddy. Like. It's, it'll only take a game or two, and then everyone will be back on Teddy. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so I agree. A ton of well, 150 this week, and everyone jumps back yep. on next week. I agree. Um, Josh Camplin, is Jake McGiven good at super coach? <laughs> he is, Josh. Uh, he, he is. He's had a bad run. Um, he's missed out on some big scores, and we gave him a hard time last week, so I think that's why he's not in the studio this week. <laughs> no, that's got nothing to do with <laughs> Jake just told me he was actually um, helping out some um, homeless people and doing some things I in the community he tonight. So, <laughs> yeah, he's actually a really good bloke. He's always out there doing good things um uh so yeah good but on no, him he's a he's a good super coach right? he's been a rival and he's played nearly as long as i have but um yeah he just ha- he has this form where he just picks up a lot of bad luck and he'll be back 
he'll 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 have a season like next season. He'll just you couldn't Kill hold it. him. Yeah, I yeah. love it how we're talking about Jake like he's a like a um like he's, like he's a super, yeah, no like he's a yeah like he's a NRL team like like he's the Broncos struggling like oh, he's all he's always had good culture you know like he'll, he'll come back and that's how us people addicted to Supercoach treat yeah I don't, managing no, look, clubs here it's it's beautiful but I like I don't I think we're just giving him a bit too hard of a time he went a couple of plays no and let's didn't go let's be no, honest it's, it's it's Sav's yeah. giving him a hard time oh yeah it is Sav's. We, we, don't, we don't bolter, in. bolter us into this. It is Sav's giving him a hard you, time. You know but what? You know what? Fun. You guys have to roast the fuck out of me because I had I a do. shit week. I had a shit week. When? This week. No, no you didn't. You, you stayed level ahead. A shit oh. week would have been not captaining Tommy and it, that wasn't a shit. You can't say it's a shit week, man. Yeah, right. The shit week is when you, you drop 500 spots because you haven't saved the trade. Then I'll be giving it to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, okay, let's wrap it up and do bold predictions and captain. And bold predictions and captain choices. What are we thinking? I'll go first. Yes. Um, so Close. it's very interesting. Right at this stage, I've got VC David Nofaluma purely if I captained uh, Tedesco. Oh, sorry, Travojevic. If I buy Dewey, I, I vice captain Dewey because of his ceiling. Um, look, I think the more and more I think about it, I want to have the VC on Tommy. And, um, you know, I don't think I'll captain Cleary. I don't think I will. But what I think my captain will lie on either one of my fullbacks. I'm really, really keen on Tedesco. Tedesco is only 4% owned as a captain. And if he, if we find out before that man in the game that Sam Walker is ruled out, I will 100% captain Tedesco and just go for it. I'm at 9,000. I have a chance here to just go for it. And I think Brisbane will have a plan for Tommy. I think Tommy can still, you know, cream always rises to the top. And I think he'll still have a big week. But I'm just trying to be a bit different. I'm sick of going with these, you know, high percent cow. I know it works sometimes, but if I truly believe the last time t- uh, Tedesco played the Cowboys, he went bananas, and he's capable of doing what Tommy can. Yeah, Hundred percent. It looks nice. I did look at it too and just think, oh. If he stays under five, it's it's a play. Sure, I'm the captain now. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sorry, Tim. Look at me. I'm the captain now. Look at me. I'm the captain now. Sorry. Yeah, um, that's that's my that's captain. It. Yeah, so I really like the pod Tedesco. Like that's Tedesco. if Sam Walker's out. Otherwise, I think I'd just go with the pack. Yeah, so we all agree that Sam Walker has he's no a I, poison. I still, no, look, Tedesco last week was hurt, and I don't think that was entirely. But I would feel a lot safer taking a big risk if Sam Walker wasn't out. I think he's going to pop off. I think Tedesco will get a ton this week for sure. But as I said, I'm looking for 150 plus as my captain. So I'm not. I'm not laughing at you. I just, yeah. I'm just in Chile. You said I think he's going to pop off, and I just thought that yep. was funny. Sorry, Tim, <laughs> Timbo. Sorry, it's a good way to say where, it. Where, you, pop where, off. Where, where are you going at, Timo? What's going on? You want to know what's going on over here? Where you going in there, bros? <laughs> yeah, no nah, good. Oh, you got a fucking cigarette, bro? What do you want to know about my captains? Yeah, what captain are you going there, cuz? <laughs> um, I. Okay, um, I, I think I've just I'm going to be playing Jane and do the VC um, Turbo and Captain Query at this point. I don't think there's much more creative things outside of that. And just uh, is that what's that mean? Yeah, that's pretty bold, eh, Cass? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> who's saying that? Who's who's that? Is it a button? Is that, did you say that? No, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, My, uh, Mikey's usually see we we had an absolutely off 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 the. Uh, what what's the word for off air? It was off the chart, off, off the, the chart wall. show last week. Like it, it was not, it was not followed a script. It was absolutely loose. We needed Mike no here this week to get us back yeah. on track. <laughs> hey, look, and, and, and he's he, he's just encouraging it even more. <laughs> I know. I, I was, I was listening. To I'm last week. Of, yeah, I'm I'm just trying to get him. Mike is not wearing any pants. Just trying to sort of get us <laughs> yeah, in a good. I'm, I'm whipping them around. <laughs> I feel like the the appeal of our show was just loose and fun, and we, we kind of went away from that sometimes. And but that, like, that's what we bring with the experience. It, so. It's nice to bring it back some weeks. But yeah, Timmy. Um, yeah, great, great, great option. I think it's a safe play. It's yep. very good and. Yeah, the world where Tommy doesn't go too good, you can rely on someone safe as Cleary. I yep. definitely see that as an option for myself, but yep. um, yeah, I definitely want to captain one of my fullbacks. Yeah, and I'm going to go the same as you, Timmy, so I'm uh, going to waste no time there. Um, let's go to our bold predictions. Um, uh, a listener actually informed me last week that 
We, we did should. quite well. We did pretty well. Oh, actually, we all did well except me. Uh, no, I, <laughs> I, I got mine completely. I don't know if I was the only one. I got mine I 100%. Got, I, only, I got two out of three. I if got you're not three included, out of three. That's nice. All right. I me. got, yeah, no first 75 plus. I got that. He turned up. I got turbo, turbo 110 one. plus and got that. 100 plus. Updates got me there. <laughs> That's my third one for the year I've nailed. Um, I'm on a roll. H- Henry was on the show last week. He went Pangai 100 plus. He failed. Cleary 130 plus. Close, but not there. Turbo 130 plus. Uh, 130 is a lot bolder than what everyone else goes, um, but I guess, yeah. Jake, if you're jamming three. You Jake actually did pretty well. Cleary 110 plus. Stains three tries and Azarko 90 plus. And, and didn't play sp- Stains. Yeah, Azarko only got uh, 50 or something. I was Turbo 100 plus. Nailed that. Holmes 100 plus. Didn't get that. Uh, best 100 plus. And your issue is you always go play your own. I feel like no, if you no. venture off with another and, few um, others, you can get them wrong. My other one was Sam Walker to be caught on camera with a classic canteen product. and Did not happen. Uh, are you sure? I th- thought I saw him with a push pop out there on the <laughs> yeah, like. did, 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 yeah, he was having a push pop. Yeah, 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 see, see, yeah, we'll, we'll put that down as a win. Um, and yours was Monster 100 plus, nailed it. No, oh, T- he got that. TPJ 100 plus, didn't get that. Yeah, that was half. Walker sub 30, and I put Cody Walker up there, but were you talking about Sam Walker? No, I mean Cody Walker. Okay, good. <laughs> and a cameraman to be taken out by a try scoring off for a HIA, which nearly happened in the first game. I, I didn't watch every game, so. Yeah, okay. It nearly, it nearly happened, didn't quite happen. But yeah, I feel like we're getting better at this and I think I'm ready to rock and roll this one. Um, Good. But what the listener, I think it was Rick Harrington. Um, oh, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so it. we pretty much, we should be keeping tally of how many we're getting. Yeah, like so the whisperer the, does. So at yeah. the end of the year... We have one punishment. It's well, not that's like just some homework for you to go back over. What no, we can oh, definitely. It's me, isn't it? No, we can definitely go back and do each of us and work out what we each done, and then go to the NRL stats, work it out. We definitely could. I feel yeah. like I'd be at the top because I've I've got quite a few right. Uh, fine, I'll go over it. <laughs> uh, thank you, Saz. Well, no, I, I, I can actually, do it myself. No, I, I Let's think teach may, maybe a week of maybe. The buy rounds where there's less games, I can go through it or something, yeah, something like that. Do that, and then we can get like um, a tally, and then we can maybe, update it maybe, every week. Maybe from now, I'll, I'll tally it from now at least. Yeah, so maybe last week you could write down, have it on a tally sheet, and then yeah. So, oh, like so we weren't serious about our bold predictions in the past, but now we're getting. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we've so always wanted consequences. So the end of the year, it, it's going to be fucked. So whatever the best suggestion is. No, we let well, none of us get to choose. We put up for like each of us can no, to run each, it straight at no, like a professional each, rugby league player. No, each of us choose an option and then we put it to the Supercoach Experience listeners. So we put it at a tally what, and they choose. The people oh, what they want. I, you know yeah, hundred I mean? percent. I also have one more question. What uh, are we? Are we rewarding how many you get right or are we rewarding the percentage? Because we want people to have more incentive to use more bold predictions. So, so it, you, you, there'd be rules. Nah, you, have to use, nah, you have to use three and it'd just be each one you get right. Maybe you, you get a bonus point for getting three out of three that week. Yep. yep 100%. I like it. I like it. Because that's bit, I hard. I think it gets weird when you start getting a bit over five bold predictions. Nah, you know what I mean? Keep it to free. You get a bonus point for getting a full round and then one point for each okay. other. And how then you've always got your random one because if it comes off, it feels no, great. A random about, one, just a bonus point. How about these random ones I you put on points. a separate photo? Yeah. Like all our random ones on the same photo? And yeah. the bonus point gets a treat. <laughs> the bonus point winner gets a treat. Um, is this what you were talking about before when you said something about, um, oh, something about us getting off or something? Like we're going to get off? <laughs> but I feel like this can be an off-the-air segment and we'll bring it to you next week with what we're doing. But there will be consequences for the loser. Yeah. And quickly, I think that's a segue into... Bold predictions. Um, I guess oh, I'll maybe do the... Oh, uh, yeah. I can just do all myself. <laughs> all right, Sabs, over to you, mate. <laughs> and over to you, Sabs. My bold predictions for the week. Having a look. What? Oh, I've got mine ready. Do you want me just to so jam in? Yeah, um, okay, go, go, go. Ho- uh, oh, hold on. All right, now let's get a sad. Yeah, so you yeah. never guess. Okay, guess go, go, go. All right, let's over to Mike. Okay, so we're going to go Tedesco 110 plus. I'm feeling it. I've, I've got a ride Tedesco there. I'm also going to stick to my team. I'm going to go CHN. He's going 70 plus. That's Corey Hawaranaira. And my third one is actually not going to be a super coach one. It's going to be for the Broncos to upset Manly. Oh. Huge one, but that is very bold, and I'm feeling bold. So they're my three, and uh, do I need to do a bonus one? Yeah, sure. My bonus one's going to be that uh, this week, one of the 18th men will have to come in. 
there'll be three concussions or whatever, not an 18th man will be have to be used. All right, nice, Timmy. Um, yeah, I'm making this up on the spot again. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go some players I don't have just to jinx, uh, to like uh, anti-jinx myself. Like, so if you call it, it doesn't happen. Yeah. So oh, I want to get them right though, don't I? Okay, okay. So I want to get them right. I'm not gonna do that. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go with Turbo. Yep. Turbo 100 plus. Is that bold? Yep. If I do three. Yep. You sure it's bold? Is Turbo 100 plus bold? Yeah. Okay. Um, great. I'll take that. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Isaiah Papalihi, my boy. Um, he's playing against his old club. I like an old club matchup. And I think um, he's going to want to sort of, you know, show the boys. You know, it'll be more about bragging rights, not like a, just, you know, like a, you know, what the boys are like, with, you know, like, oh, bro, got around you. you know? <laughs> hey, shame. I think it'll be heaps fun. I think he'll have a good time out there and I think he's going to get 100 as well. And um, the third one I'm going to give is Stains uh, 100 plus. Oh, that's another hat trick because you won't get a, a 100 otherwise. That's all right. And my, um, it's, I've, I've wasted a um, bold prediction earlier in the year and I think it was my first crazy bold prediction and it, I knew it was going to happen this week. I know it's going to happen this week. Um, I called it earlier in the year. It didn't happen. It was silly just to call it, but it's there's definitely, definitely going to be a nudie run this <laughs> had this round. We're going to have because it's 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 all at the one game. You're going to have a few of the boys together going down. You're going to have round. someone get to that third Saturday game and go. Whoa! Somebody go on there, get in there, jump and don't. No, you do it. That's how you do it. I'll fucking give you a fifty. You know, like, there'll be yeah, there's going to be one. It's going to be. And do you know what? It's going to be female. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big call. Female big, streaker. Hey, you didn't really have to. <laughs> no, the, the thing is, they're so ridiculous that that makes all the sense in the world from Timmy. And to add to it, one of the players is going to drop a shoulder. <laughs> he's going to run near and he's just going to like react, respond. They won't do that at all. No, he's not going to do it intentionally. He's oh, not going to okay. see it. Something's going to come in his peripheral. A naked lady. If he gets this, give me And he's going to drop his, his shoulder... If I get this, I'll probably get locked up for knowing too much of it. You know? <laughs> but um, yeah, that's Who, what's who's happen. your guy? <laughs> he's your guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and over to you. So Seth. my bold prediction is actually very different this week. So I've got the Cowboys to beat the Roosters. I got them thirteen plus. The Roosters. Well, that's weird, and I like it because they're kind of they surprise me every time they win. It's yeah. like that coach is finally like, I know what I'm doing. I'm actually a yeah. good coach, and these guys. Are okay. He is a good coach. Yeah, I, I, I rate him. I think the start of the season he was a bit... Um, he was off-putting. Um, but yeah, yeah, he, what was, he, did he was, but I, th- I think he's he... kind of earned a bit of respect now. So. The Paggy, he's a new new coach, a new club. They're it, starting it try- to ride on him. He was trying to set his mark and he probably did things on the wrong foot at the start of the year. But He said to I, the I commentators, guess- he's a lo- he said, I consider myself a local. <laughs> and, that was- um, and then the second one is Maddo to outscore Papali. Is that bold? Yeah, it's bold because he's going to have to score more than 100. Yeah. Um, yep. And Lee Martin, 100 plus. Yeah, that is bold. Um, I like Martin, but I think. My 80. crazy one, I don't know if this is ethical to put this in there. Hold on, just say it off. Just, no, just turn say the mic it, off. Just, oh, no, no, no. It's, oh, okay. it's fine, but I, I don't want to put it because it's unfortunate. An ACL to happen on Sunday. Oh, yeah. oh, I don't think that's. I've just said that some bloke's going to hit a naked lady with a shoulder. I'm not saying I want <laughs> Actually, that to happen. To be fair, it could be less cruel than a HIA to happen because HIA to the brain is... Yeah, look, if you think that's going to happen, that's a bold prediction. And if people take it the wrong way, we don't mean any offence, but we don't want anyone to nah, do their nah, ACL. We nah, just... We don't. what he feels. We, we don't, predicted. but I just feel like the one ground, you know... Well, you decide. So Maybe you don't. You're not going to go, yes, when you get it either. <laughs> though, you're not, you're not going to be like, yeah, oh, I got that one, guys. I got it, got it. Yeah. Oh, bro, I said that ACL the, was going to happen, bro. I week, did that. I did that to him. Next week, watch him go, yes. I got that special one. <laughs> Do you know what? I hope it's your favourite player. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I don't. That's, that's, no, 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 I didn't mean it. No, I didn't, Tom, Tommy, no, you make him no, cry, no, man. No, no, no. Nah, Tommy's playing on the Friday, so my bold prediction is for it to happen on the Sunday. Yeah, but watch watch the black cat get here. it won't go let's get um like positive things to happen. Shit. <laughs> oh shit! That was oh, that one. was Mikey using. I've used the right sound effects the whole podcast. Look, and that was the wow 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 before, and you've changed oh, your no, pattern. No, no, because because there's like there you go. 
Thank you. So this has been this has been a pretty good good mix, good mix of info, good mix of banter. Tim's on at the moment too with the punt, so he's going to put a um a cheeky live bet for you guys. I'll chuck one up no, too. I won four seventy last week. I'm it's doing gonna, all right. Uh, yeah, I won about three grand. Um, well, give me some advice, please. Yeah, you, I'll, I'll get you onto it. You guys can all get onto it. It'll be a yeah, it'll be a one one bet, and I'll I'll make sure it's available by um you know. Two hours before a game that would involve it. Okay, you know I, I mean? I've got my bold prediction: a prop to score a double. That's that's bold. I like it. Just it's not party prediction, but who no. you're feeling? Who you're feeling? You don't have to. It's not included, but just name me a prop right now. Who do you think is going to be the most likely to score a double? I know. For some reason, I was thinking Thomas Burgess. The fish, can, no, he, can he go again? <laughs> no, my head went to Canberra for some reason. Papali. Mm-hmm. I don't oh. think it's going to be Papali, though. I felt Ryan Sutton. He's I injured, I mate. I don't even know if his name Who's the other one? Ryan James. Off the uh, uh, Dunamis Louis coming back. You've no, got. I'm not feeling that. Maybe. Um, uh, I feel like a Paul Vaughan. Gulga. Emre yeah. Gulga. Yeah, he's starting. But yeah, yeah, no, I like Paul it. Vaughan against Melbourne. Yeah, you're an idiot. <laughs> I feel like Emre Gould has got a bit of those high shorts, like um, he's got a bit of high shorts, like um, the man you were just talking about. Yeah. Oh, uh, you don't have to name one. No, time. no, Paul Vaughan is what I'm feeling. I know it's against <laughs> Melbourne, but it's what I'm feeling. Actually, to be fair, St George with a 16 and a half start with uh, Grant Munster and Pappenhausen out, and Brandon Smith. Not not bad. Pappenhausen maybe. Pappenhausen. Pappenhausen Pappen, Pappenhausen's there. Do not underestimate this storm, mate. They've got, a right. good, they've got good people to fill in. Let's, All right. let's wrap it up. We are off, guys. So thank you for listening. We'll see you next week and mm. enjoy yeah. your super coach. Good. <laughs> Get some bread, get some bread, get some bread, get some bread.